Hi, this is Olga at Haya, and today I'll be talking about the Power Air Fryer XL. Now, the Power Air Fryer XL is a kitchen appliance that uses turbo cyclonic air instead of oil to cook your food. This turbo cyclonic air is basically a whirlwind of superheated air, which is very similar, if not identical, to a convection oven. Now, the makers of this air fryer claim that this type of cooking results in fewer calories and more healthy meals. Some of the major claims of this air fryer is number one, that it features six different cooking methods. This air fryer is supposedly able to fry, bake, steam, saute, grill, and roast. Another major claim is that this air fryer reaches a temperature of 400 degrees in a matter of seconds. It uses little to no oil, it has one touch easy cooking, and it is dishwasher safe. The company claims that using this air fryer is as easy as loading the basket with food, selecting the appropriate setting, and then enjoying your prepared meal. So let's go ahead and put that to the test. Here I have a 3.4 quart version of the air fryer in color black. This particular air fryer retails for $119.97 and can be purchased on Amazon as well as directly from the company's website. This air fryer is a fairly simple appliance. It has a light-up display and is basically composed of the removable outer basket as well as the fry basket. Now the set also comes with a food separator insert which can be used if you want to cook two different types of food. And of course you can insert and remove this separator as you wish. Now the outer and fry basket assembly can be removed simply by pulling on the handle. And after that, you can press the red release button to release the fry basket from the outer basket. Now on my first few attempts, I did find it fairly difficult to press the red button with one hand and remove the fry basket. However, after a couple of tries, it seemed to release a lot easier and is definitely manageable with just one hand. Now it's important to know that this fry basket is the only part of this air fryer that is actually dishwasher safe. No other part of this air fryer can go into the dishwasher. The outer basket has to be washed separately by hand. The back of this air fryer does have an air outlet vent, which releases hot steam during cooking. And this is definitely something to be aware of since it does release pretty hot steam. It's also recommended in the instructions that this vent is not obstructed and is always kept open. The display and menu is also pretty straightforward. It has four main option buttons, which are the power button, which is located in the center, the preset button, which is directly below it, the time control button to the left, and the temperature control button to the right. This air fryer comes with seven programmed cooking settings, which you can list through by pressing the preset button identified by the letter M. And these presets are fries, chops, shrimp, baked goods, chicken, steak, and fish. These preset choices come with pre-programmed temperature and time settings. However, you can also adjust the temperature and time setting manually for each individual dish. The maximum temperature that this air fryer reaches is 400 degrees Fahrenheit. This also comes with an automatic shut off timer, which is a very nice feature. With this air fryer, you also get a small recipe booklet, which features 27 different recipes, as well as the instructions manual. Now, one of the big claims is that this air fryer has six different cooking methods. So I wanted to go ahead and test out each one of those methods to see just how well it performs. For my first experiment to test out the air frying capability of this air fryer, I decided to make french fries. Now the recipe from the provided recipe book calls for blanched potatoes, which I seasoned and added just a couple of tablespoons of oil for flavor. I selected the french fries program, which comes preset for 18 minutes of cooking at 400 degrees. Now, halfway through the cooking time, you are supposed to pull out the 
outer and fry basket assembly and shake up the fries to ensure even cooking. A very nice feature on this air fryer is that at any time during your cooking process, you can remove the outer basket to check the doneness of your food without interrupting the preset timer and temperature. As soon as you put the basket back in, the timer picks up exactly where you left off at that correct temperature to finish preparing your meal. Now, once the timer was done, the air fryer did shut off automatically, and I had these pretty appetizing french fries. Now, all the residual oil is collected on the bottom of the outer basket, and while this cooking method doesn't give you that crispy, deep fry taste, these fries turned out to be very good. They weren't oily or greasy at all, as you can see from the paper towel, which collected barely any oil at all. Now next, to test out how well this air fryer can grill, I decided to prepare a nice piece of ribeye. For this particular recipe, the instructions do recommend that you preheat your air fryer by turning it on for four minutes prior to cooking your food. After the four minutes were up, I placed my ribeye into the fry basket, selected the steak setting, and adjusted the cooking time to 14 minutes per the instructions in the recipe book. Now you do need to turn your steak halfway through cooking, and after about 14 minutes total, the steak was done. Now with this air fryer, you of course aren't gonna get those grill marks, but it does give your meat a nice color. My steak came out medium well and tasted fairly good. Now of course you can adjust the time accordingly to have your steak prepared either more well or rare, but the only downside is that if you were to cook this steak 10 minutes instead of the 14 that's recommended, you wouldn't have as much color on your steak and it would probably come out looking a lot more boiled rather than grilled. So while it's definitely possible to make a steak in this air fryer that's maybe rare or medium rare, it won't have that beautiful color that you really want on your piece of steak. To test out how well this air fryer can roast, I wanted to try the roasted chicken recipe. I have a non-frozen, about five pound roasted chicken that's been seasoned and lightly drizzled with oil. And as you can see, this is about as big a chicken as you can fit into this 3.4 quart size of the air fryer. After selecting the chicken program, I made sure that the timer was set to 20 minutes and the temperature was set to 360 degrees. And after 20 minutes, the top of the chicken seemed to be cooked really well maybe even a little too well due to the large size of the chicken. And once I turned the chicken over to cook and roast on the other side, you can see that the other side was entirely raw and uncooked. After an additional 20 minutes, I checked the chicken for doneness and it was well below the required 160 degrees. So I went ahead and put it in for an additional 20 minutes of cooking. Now throughout the next 20 minutes, I kept checking the temperature periodically and found that after about 15 minutes, my roasted chicken was at 160 degrees, so I decided to take it out since parts of the skin looked almost burned by this time. Now the chicken did turn out to be fairly juicy and tasted well, however after I really started carving into the chicken and getting closer to the bone, there were parts that I would have liked to cook just a few more minutes. Ideally, I would have liked to roast this chicken another maybe five to 10 minutes, but the difficult part is that the surface and top of the chicken cooks and browns so much quicker because it is so much closer to the heating element of this air fryer, which would most definitely give me a very dark and probably burnt skin. Steaming is one of the six cooking methods that this air fryer claims to do. And I wasn't exactly sure how an air fryer or something similar to an oven can steam. So to test that out, I decided to try making steamed vegetables. Now I actually tried to find a recipe for steamed vegetables in the recipe book as well as online on the Power Air Fryer Excel's website, but I wasn't able to find anything. So I decided to improvise and give it a shot and I seasoned some mixed vegetables and drizzled some olive oil 
place them in the fry basket for about 10 minutes at 320 degrees. And after about 10 minutes, the vegetables looked very much roasted and nothing close to steamed. They still had a lot of crunch to them and weren't very soft and tender on the inside. Now, to steam anything, you would have to add water to the air fryer to create that steam that's required for steaming. However, the instructions clearly state do not put any liquids or water into the outer basket. From the brief demonstration video that the Air Fryer XL has on their website, they do show a separate pan that is inserted into the fry basket that you could probably fill with water and get that steamed cooking method. However, they certainly don't make that easy to do with the items that you're given in the box. Based on that, I would say that it's impossible to steam in this air fryer unless you purchase additional appliances that would allow you to safely add liquids into this air fryer and allow you to steam. For my next experiment, I wanted to try making a nice piece of salmon filet. On the company's website, they showcase a piece of salmon as something you can make using the saute cooking method. However, again, I wasn't able to find a recipe anywhere for that particular dish. I had a fairly large piece of salmon, and generally I noticed that the part of the meat that is on top gets a better color and cooks more, so I placed my seasoned salmon filet skin side up. I selected the pre-programmed fish setting and let the fish cook for 10 minutes. Now after the 10 minutes were up, I didn't really get that nice crispy skin and there were definitely parts of the filet that could have used a couple more minutes. However, for the most part, the fish looked good, it tasted very good, it was juicy and had a really good flavor. Just to experiment, I did put the fish filet into the air fryer for an additional four to five minutes, which may have been a bit too long, but still the result was very good. The fish was cooked well and juicy and I thoroughly enjoyed the finished product. And finally, Air Fryer XL claims that you can use this for various baking dishes, which actually makes a whole lot of sense because essentially this is a small convection oven. However, to test this claim, I did want to try making a pie. Now, I bought a 9 inch foil pan and lined it with pie crust. However, I was pretty disappointed to find out that this 3.4 quart size doesn't fit a basic 9 inch pan. So I had to get creative and I decided to instead make individual sized mini pies in small ramekins. Unfortunately, I was only able to fit three ramekins into the fry basket. And after cooking the dough for about five minutes on the bake setting, I filled the ramekins with fruit filling and put it back in for an additional 15 minutes at 310 degrees. And not very surprisingly, this air fryer baked the pies just fine and the result was quite delicious. The obvious downside, of course, is that you're not able to fit a standard 9-inch pan into this 3.4 quart size of the air fryer. And in the best case scenario, you can only make three mini pies at a time, which is hardly a time saver. Now as for the cleanup of this air fryer, I do have to say that it is fairly painless. I never spent more than a couple minutes washing the fry basket and the outer basket, and most of the time I did it by hand. It is important to remember that only the fry basket is actually dishwasher safe. The outer basket has to be washed by hand. However, given how easy it is to clean those fry baskets and outer baskets, I don't know why anyone would really wanna wait a whole dishwashing cycle to wash these appliances. Now, another point that I feel is important to note is that the recipe book that's provided could have definitely used more thought and editing. There were some pretty glaring mistakes and oversights throughout the book. For example, in the roasted chicken recipe, the instructions state to season the turkey instead of the chicken. Also, the ingredient list for that same recipe didn't indicate the unit of measurement for garlic powder, so you really didn't know if it was one teaspoon of garlic powder or one tablespoon. Of course, these errors are not detrimental to cooking, but it would have been nice to see some more thought and proofreading go into a product that retails for over $100. So here is my final verdict on the Air Fryer XL. 
I have to be honest and say that initially after my first test with the french fries, I was thoroughly impressed with this air fryer. However, after further testing and using of this product, I have come to the conclusion that it is nothing more than a small oven and it really doesn't do anything that a convection oven can already do. Now, yes, the claim that you need to use very little to no oil when using this air fryer is very true, but it's also true for any recipe that you can make in your oven. Having said that, here are my pros and cons. One of the positives is that this air fryer does heat up very quickly. The instructions do say that if you want a well-heated air fryer, you just need to turn it on for three minutes. Now, I wouldn't say that it's a matter of seconds, but it does take just a couple minutes to get it fairly hot. Another positive is that this air fryer is truly very easy to use. The menu is very easy to understand and to navigate, and I would say after about five to 10 minutes, you can easily feel comfortable using this air fryer. Lastly, the cleanup of the outer and the fry basket assembly truly is very simple. It never took me more than a couple of minutes to wash everything by hand. Now, as for the cons, the biggest one for me was the size of this 3.4 quart air fryer. It really was too small for many meals. At most, you could maybe fit three pieces of steak or fish fillet at a time. And like we've already seen, you cannot fit a standard nine inch pie pan inside of this air fryer. So you would really need to get creative if you wanted to do some baking. The second negative is that it doesn't truly deliver on all six cooking methods that this air fryer claims to do. The biggest one for me was the steaming option which is basically impossible without purchasing additional appliances to make this work. And the last negative for me is that this air fryer does not go above 400 degrees Fahrenheit, which is a pretty high temperature setting, but it's not quite as high as your standard oven can go. So while this air fryer didn't have an overwhelming amount of pros or cons, for me, it comes down to whether or not I need to spend $100 for another bulky kitchen appliance that can really do slightly less than what a normal oven can already do. And for me, that choice is pretty easy. And that is no, the air fryer is not something that will make my life easier or really speed up the cooking time for my meals or change the way that I approach my meals. So I really hope that this was a helpful review for you. Please be sure to subscribe to Haya on YouTube for more product reviews as well as helpful tips and information. And I hope to see you guys next time. Bye.